Now I'm going to talk to you today about what fruits and vegetables you can grow in pots or containers. So let's get to it. Hi folks, I'm Ross Binton. This is Grow Your Own Life and as always, please subscribe to my channel. That would be fantastic. Simple answer to the question, what fruits or vegetables can you grow in containers is easy. I can't think of a single fruit or vegetable off the top of my head that can't be grown in a container or a pot. And you might think that's crazy, but it's not. Because at the end of the day, what is a container or a pot? It's just a receptacle for growing in. Technically, a raised bed, if it was big enough, could be considered a container or a pot. So depending on how big your pot is, you can probably grow absolutely anything in it. If you wanted to, you could probably grow pumpkins and all sorts in containers, but you'd need a bloody big one. Let's take carrots, for example. Carrots don't like to be transplanted because they've got a really long root. But does that mean that you can't grow carrots in a pot? No, of course it doesn't. You can grow carrots in a pot. Personally, if your pot was only, let's say, two foot deep, I would stick to carrots that didn't get any bigger than six inches to eight inches to let that long taproot go down. But if you've got a pot, or an old oil drum that's three foot deep, grow the biggest carrots you can get. It will work. That's how show people grow their carrots, in big tubes, in the, so they grow nice and straight. So there's no reason why carrots can't be grown in pots. By the same reckoning, parsnips, turnips, beetroot, radishes, any form of root vegetable, including potatoes, can all be grown in pots. In fact, I think potatoes are better in pots because you don't get as much insect damage from being in the ground from the slugs that live un under the soil. Because in a pot, it's a contained unit, therefore the creatures have got to literally crawl up through the holes, the drainage holes, or they've got to go over the side to get in, and there's less chance of them doing that. Whereas if they're in the ground, Mr. Slug just walking along, potato, and he's eating it. Okay, So potatoes in pots, good thing. I grow all my potatoes in pots, and I have fantastic harvests you'll see in some of my videos so any root vegetable pretty much can be grown in a pot as long as the pot is big enough now this takes me to another point anything can be grown in pots as long as the pot is big enough for that particular fruit or vegetable but you have to remember that anything you grow in a pot is completely reliant on you the grower for all its food and water yes its roots can't go out foraging for food and water and goodness and whatever it needs from other places because you've confined it in a captive place in a pot or a container. It can't go anywhere and that's why plants become root bound because they overgrow and then rah, nothing can happen and they suck out all the goodness and they suck out all the minerals and the pot's too small and blah, they die or they don't fruit or whatever. And that's, that's why when you have plants like roses that grow in pots, every year you pot them on into a bigger pot and then you add more goodness and you add more nutrients and then they grow and flower and so on. And eventually you get a rose that's so big that most people either get rid of them or they put them in the garden or, or whatever else. Anyway, I digress. Fruits and vegetables are exactly the same. They need water. So if it's a really, really hot summer, you might have to water that twice a day. You might have to water that in the morning and again in the evening because it'll have used up the water in that pot so quickly so so quickly and don't forget a pot by its very nature is on top of the soil and all the sides are exposed right so that heat is going through so water will naturally it will get hotter and it will evaporate out it's not like in the ground where the water can sit you know below the let below the level of the grass i mean sometimes on my allotment because my allotment is wet in the summer i can dig maybe six inches down and i can find damp soil in, on a week when it's been 30 degrees all week I can find damp soil just below the surface you won't get that in a pot the pot will literally just bake and dry out that's why they need lots of water in pots but they don't need over watering if you've had a good downpour and there's been a good heavy rain the day before just simple test get your finger stick it in the pot does underneath the surface feel moist if it feels moist leave it well alone it's fine it's good if it's dry then give it a water. Same goes for food, and by food I mean nutrients. Plants obviously don't eat, well they do, but they don't eat like we think they eat. 
So don't go out there and like, you know, give your tomatoes Big Macs and stuff. Um, unless obviously it's a Venus flytrap. Exceptions to the rule there, they do actually eat <coughs> to, a degree, to a degree. But they need nutrients, they need goodness. They, they, need, their, they need their vitamins, they need their potash, uh, they need their nitrogen, they need their potassium, they need oh, everything that I can't think of right now. All the goodness that comes in fertilizer. See, I tend to use chicken manure pellets and I tend to use bloodfish and bone meal. Uh, and that really helps me get my compost going. But if I'm growing things, let's say like cucumbers, again, that can be grown in pots, all my cucumbers are in pots in the greenhouse. Um, just because British climate, I need to keep them nice and humid. If you're somewhere else where it's not humid, you could probably grow cu cucumbers in a pot on a balcony, job done. But they, they need, they're a hungry plant, a cucumber. They need lots of food. So probably for every four to six weeks, I'm giving them a scoop of chicken, giving them a scoop of chicken manure pellets, a scoop of bloodfish and bone meal, uh, and that keeps them going. All the fertilizers, you can do whatever you want to do. So just remember, and that goes, you've got to feed them, you've got to water them. Um, if you neglect a potted plant, a potted vegetable or a potted fruit, even for just a few weeks in the summer, it'll, it'll die. It's not like in the ground. Sometimes you can get away with leaving stuff in the ground and going away for a week, come back, it's fine. Because although it's probably gone down a bit in, it, in its peak productivity, uh, its roots have been able to go out and get what it needs. Um, in a pot, can't do that, it will die. And, and I have killed so many plants uh, in pots from that very reason. I've been lazy and just not watered them for two days, let's say. You know, I've, I've been out with the family, we've gone for a weekend away, or I've oh, been out to the pub and I've got in, it's been a really hot day, I'm not watering the garden. I'm blah, 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 blah. Wake up the following morning at, you know, like three o'clock in the afternoon, and whatever it was, the tomato, the chili plant, this and the other is dead it's literally just dried up the day before and then it's been in the baking hot sun with no water and it's dead and you water it and you try and get it back to goodness but it's just had it because it's literally being killed and they're never ever quite the same so remember feed it and feed it well good compost good fertilizer to start with that's just to start with right and then once the plant starts growing depending on what the plant is and what sort of nutrients it needs which you'll know if you read gardening books on the back of seed packets it'll tell you you know give it its potassium give it, it its nitrogen give it its blood meal give it its potash give it its chicken manure pellets whatever when it needs it throughout the growing season and that will help you get the best harvest possible going back to actual plants that i've grown in pots i can list them now i just think about what's in my allotment so we've got cucumbers in pots, I've got tomatoes in pots, I've got chilies in pots, I've got strawberries and a big raised bed planter. No reason why you can't grow strawberries in pots. I've grown loads of strawberries in pots and had loads of success with them. Um, you can grow beans in pots, runner beans, French beans, whatever, they grow up. So as long as you've got a nice big base for the root, maybe you've got, I don't know, poor uh, 30 litre pot you can grow some runner beans. You could probably grow some runner beans quite easily on a balcony, in a pot, stick four to six plants in, keep it well fed, well watered, put up a cane structure so they grow. You'll be picking beans all through the summer and the autumn because they just love it, absolutely love it. You can grow courgettes in pots. You can grow lettuces, radishes, spring onions, Normal onions will grow in pots, although they take up a bit more space. Um, you can grow leeks in pots. You can grow kale in pots. You can grow chard in pots. You can grow, what else can we grow in pots? We can grow beetroot in pots, turnips in pots, carrots, parsnips, mm -hmm. sweet peppers in pots. You could grow raspberries in pots. You could grow black currants in pots, blueberries in pots, gooseberries in pots. You could get a dwarf apple tree and you could grow that in a pot. You could get dwarf plum trees, dwarf pear trees, apricot trees, orange trees. They all grow in pots. Literally, I don't think there's much that you can't grow in pots to some degree. Yes, you might not have the biggest harvest in the world, but you can grow everything in pots. Because what is a pot? It's just a way of containing goodness. And as long as you're topping that goodness up, and as long as you're keeping an eye on it, you're keeping that plant healthy so it doesn't matter even pumpkins giant massive big pumpkins this big you can grow them in pots if you can get a big enough pot 
if you're willing to feed it and nurture it and look after it you can grow a pumpkin in a pot it's no problem whatsoever they are massively hungry plants and they are massively thirsty and you i wouldn't say you'll have your work cut out for you but it would you know it would be a fair bit of work right to keep it going it's it would be you know an every other day a daily thing to keep it going uh, and there would have to be some pruning involved so it didn't get too big and so you nurture one or two fruit rather than letting four or five grow but you could grow a pumpkin in a pot no problem whatsoever again if the pot was big enough some things that you can grow in pots which probably it's not that they wouldn't work but it would be really too counterproductive okay would be things like cabbages uh, and brassicas and cauliflowers and things like that simply because you need a pretty big pot to start with and you'd only get one in there so if you did a ca cauliflower let's say you'd have a pretty big 10 litre pot and then that would have one cauliflower in it so really and truthfully let's say you have a small space like a balcony would you really want to grow just one cauliflower in the corner in a 10 litre pot when really and truthfully that 10 litre pot with radishes, lettuces, tomato, chard, some herbs. That could keep you going, picking and re-sowing all season, or you could have one cauliflower. So for me, it's a no-brainer, but if you want to grow one cauliflower in a pot, you crack on, it's your garden, you do it. But then there's other things you do. Let's say you're a massive lover of sprouts. My other half, she absolutely loves sprouts. I haven't grown any this year, um, simply because I, I, have, I have little success with sprouts. I don't know why. They're just like my nemesis vegetable but sprouts grow on a cane so they grow up like that now i reckon if you put and a sprout is a brassica this is why i'm mentioning um sprouts after cauliflowers brassica member of the cabbage family S sorry technical terms um so there's no reason why you can't grow a lovely tall sprout in a pot on a balcony on a patio somewhere and then It'll look, it'll look really, really nice. Sprouts do look lovely. I'll have a picture up just so you show on growing. And you can get some really tall varieties called walking stick that grow for like five foot. People actually keep the stick and turn it into a walk, like a hiking stick afterwards. Uh, they're really cool. And you get some really lovely sprouts off it just in time for Christmas. Why not do that? Why not give that a whirl? So the only thing that is limiting what can grow in pots is your time and your imagination. That's it. Go nuts, experiment, try absolutely everything and give it a whirl. And please let me know how you get on. In the comments below, even if it's a year from now or two years from now, just say, I watched your video Ross, it was really cool. And because of you, I put a 10 litre pot on my balcony in my 10th floor block flats apartment. And I had herbs all summer or I grew the most amazing tomatoes, or I grew this, that, and the other, I would love to hear from you. So please, pop down the garden center, get yourself some compost or some pots, and get growing, folks. Till next time, take care. Speak soon.